It's Carrie from Classic Cottage Art and Antiques in Bowling Green, Virginia, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Creating at Classic Cottage. Today, we're going to talk about Dixie Bell Paint Company's product called Crackle. This technique was very popular several years ago, like way long time ago, but it's coming back a little bit. I use it mostly for signs, which is what I'm going to show you today, but I've also used it on furniture. Let me show you what I mean. I did this little table and the crackle technique is the background. Isn't that cool? So I'm really tickled with this piece right here and I'm going to uh, do a similar treatment on my board here. But if you'll notice, the background is dark through the crack. I don't know if you can see that or not. But there's dark behind the cracks, and that's what we're going for today. You can do this either way. You can do it with a light background and a dark top. I actually prefer to do a dark background with a light top. And let me show you why for today. I've got, had this transfer for quite some time, and the lettering is actually dark. This is just the backing paper that shows it white, but the lettering is actually dark. So I don't want to put dark on top of my crackle medium because the lettering won't show up then. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a dark purple similar to this color here as my background. Then I'm going to put a layer of the crackle down and then I'm going to put a layer of cotton Dixie Bell's cotton color on top of the crackle, and then I'll apply my transfer. So here is my board already painted. You saw I painted my board with the color amethyst, Dixie Bell chalk mineral paint amethyst, and I applied one coat of crackle. Normally I let it dry overnight, but this time I went ahead and put a fan on it. And you can see where it's got, I don't know if you can see in the light, but you can definitely tell where it's crackled. It's some lighter than the other. So now I'm going to apply the color cotton because I want a, bright, a brighter white background for my transfer. Because I want a brighter, white, brighter background for my transfer. I'm using a synthetic brush for this. Now, the one thing you definitely want to remember when you are painting on your top color. Do not overwork it. That will reduce the effectiveness of your crackle action, I guess, for whatever lack of better words. I like to use a slightly damp brush, and I mean just barely, barely damp. All right, make sure everything is completely dry. Your paint needs to be dry before you put the crackle medium on it, and your crackle medium needs to be dry before you put the lighter color on top. I don't want to get too carried away, but I, you know, I don't want to get too stingy with it either. Basically, I'm going to go across it, and I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to do it too many times because my crackle medium won't work. I do want to make sure it's covered though. Now, like I said, I normally like to wait till the crackle is dried overnight. You want to put it on a little bit thick, and like I said, I missed a bunch of spots here, so I'm going to kind of fix that. Hopefully, it'll crack properly, and hopefully, it'll start crackling here in just a minute. Now, once you see a crackling, don't go back and, and paint over it, because it will for sure not continue to crack once you do that. You're basically filling in the cracks once you do that. But once it starts to crackle, don't brush back over it. Oh, beautiful. I'm going to get this real quick here. All right. I don't know if you can see this already or not. Hold it up here. You see how it's already starting to crackle here? That is cool. That's what I'm looking for. I love those little cracks like that. 
and as it dries, it will continue to crackle. Sometimes it's immediate, sometimes not so much. Now, what you don't want to do is put a second coat on here. And the paint thinner in some areas. Let me fix this real quick. Um, but I can see where it is thinner in some areas. It is already starting to crackle. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of paint here because I miss the edge. But the key is don't do this. Just let it... Oh, look at this. It's starting to crackle already. I love this. It's almost immediate satisfaction once you get to this point. If you can kind of watch it crackle as I talk. It is awesome. And it's so much fun to watch. But this is cool. And I probably should have used fluff because cotton does tend to be a little more sheer. But we'll see how it looks with the transfer. If I don't like it, I will give it a sand and I'll start the process all over again. So let's watch it crack for just a second more. Look how quick, I mean, it's like, it's really warm in here. So it is cracking quickly like this. I think I'm gonna like it a lot. If in fact I don't like it, we can always, I can always do what I did on my little table that I showed you earlier, is that I could actually go back with some glaze and, and put glaze on it. But I love to watch crackle work. It is just so much fun. So once this is dry, we'll come back and put the transfer on. So wasn't thrilled the way this came out the first time. Although it cracked beautifully. Um, I, the cracks were a little too big for what I wanted. Also, the cotton was a little too sheer in places. And when you try to fix it, you cause problems, just as I told you. So what I did was I painted another coat of the amethyst over everything. Because the cotton was on there to begin with, it didn't continue to tr did not continue to crack, which is good. So I painted another coat of the amethyst color on top of the cotton. I dried it with the hair dryer, and then I have it applied another coat of the crackle. This time, though, because I did have those large gaps. I went this way with the crackle. And you can see it's actually, um, I went a little bit thinner as well. So you can see the, the, the texture is not quite as lumpy bumpy as it was. It's a little more subtle. I mean, there's some big spots there, but that's okay. I've started to dry this with the hair dryer. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna come back and then we're gonna do a coat of the color fluff this time because it does have a little more coverage as far as pigmentation goes than the cotton. So once this is dry, we'll come back and we'll see what happens when we put the crackle on the color over the crackle again. Okay, so now this is dry and you can see that it's not quite as lumpy bumpy as it was before. And I've now decided to use fluff to go on top of this. And I wanna make it somewhat thick, but not really thick. And I think if I don't have as long a strokes, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I wanna make sure it's covered and I wanna work quickly. I don't wanna go crazy over the um, each spot, but I wanna make sure it's covered and I don't want it to be super thick. And my, my brush is slightly damp not not soppy wet and while fluff still reads fairly white it it actually covers i think in this case better than the cotton cotton on furniture generally takes a few coats And I'm working fairly quickly here because it's going to start cracking on me, especially as hot as it is in here today. I want to make sure I have pretty good, and I know I said don't go over it, but if you catch it right away to spread it out, you can get away with that. Make sure my edges are covered well. I'm not making super thick but it's not super thin either. We'll call it a medium layer of paint. There we go. 
that's what I want. And look, it is, it is beginning to crackle already. Can you see that right here and here? So that's why you really need to work quickly, particularly if you are in a warm environment like I am today. And you also see that my cracks are a little bit um, finer. They're not as pronounced. So this is the look I was actually going for. But I love to show you all how you can fix when you think it's a loss or you don't like how it came out. I love to show you the fix for that. So this I am going to let dry overnight. And once it's dry, completely dry, I will burnish it with either a brown paper bag or a fine burnishing pad that we have. And then I will apply the transfer over top of that once it has dried. And once my project is completely finished, I'll show you the end result. But look at that, look at the crack already. And I actually went in a different direction this time so I could get, actually, I think that's what happened before. It was too long of a stroke. So I had, it was easier to get it on quicker and in the right coverage. So you can see, just look, I mean, it's just not even time-lapse, y'all. This is like real time. This is how quick this is crackling. It's, it's just so fun to watch this. It's, it's crazy. And I really like these fine cracks. Those ones are a little big, but the transfer will cover most of that. Um, but it's just, it's so much fun to watch this. It really is. So I dry this with a heat gun because I just didn't want to take the time to wait overnight for it to dry. Now I'm going to take a brown paper bag and kind of burnish it. You probably don't need to, but we're going to do it anyways. Just to make it kind of smooth. And as a matter of fact, you, cut, you could even take uh, a sanding block or something and kind of smooth it down, but it's not too bad really. Still a little warm from the heat gun. but. Isn't that awesome? I, I love the way it cracked. I mean, these are areas here where I either put too, put it on too heavily or I brushed it back too many times or something. But this part, I really love this part. The fine cracks are what I really like. So now I'm gonna put this transfer on it. I need to cool off a little bit before I do that. Which part's gonna go where? I can see that it's gonna be I don't want to take the backer paper off of this until I'm sure which way I want it to go because it, sh it should stick down fairly easily. I think that'll work. So I'm going to, as usual, on my transfers, I'm going to take the backing paper off. Out the way over here. And try to get it exactly where I want it because there aren't too many chances here. Okay, finally, and I'm gonna start in the middle. When I do this, I always go from the middle out. I just think it gives a better adhesion. It also pushes any air bubbles out that might be there. I'm gonna do it with my hands first. Just get it down where I want it. take my applicator tool here and just start rubbing. Again, I like to do from the center out so no bubbles are, are trapped up in there. Okay, now that I've got all of that done, I'm going to start on one little section here. Lifting as I go and see how that's already starting to take come up. Sometimes you can hear it pop as it starts to stick to the wood and it takes, comes off of the backing paper or the front paper. Okay. 
key though is to make sure everything is dry. Once I've got this complete, I'll come back and show you. So here's my finished sign with the crackle medium and the transfer. I decided not to frame it. Instead, I just painted the sides uh, a dark color just to kind of give it a finished look and I will paint the back and put a hanger on it. But I also, if you look closely, it may not show up on camera, but I did put a little bit of the grunge gray glaze from Dixie Belle around the edges and over it just to give it a little bit more of an aged look because I feel like crackle is really an aged type look. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so and hit the subscribe button below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.